to the title that I gather you've seen. Years ago, I published a book called Let It Talk, the title of which came out of a line by the poet Wallace Stevens, an abstraction of what it is a man by a poet. Actually, some of that blood rushed to the head when I was first directing Beckett's plays in San Francisco more than half a century ago. And would often speak to the actors in a Beckettian way, my words, inseparable from his words, as a way of thinking through what it means of what it is that he thought. I've written several essays in the past in which I was thinking for us, and there are passages here in which I'll be doing the same. If then the reading what I've written, I sometimes indicate quotations, or sometimes or mostly don't. What I think of that when he's speaking. It's because I'm trying to convey in the moment what he thought as I think it. I should say that one of the things confirmed by Beckett every time I read it is that it's precisely when the thought escapes me at the south edge or circuitous limit of thought that it may, tautologically, turn back upon itself, which is what keeps it going to be thrown all over again. This time, to begin with, in even more quite personal terms. These include a shared disorder between us, a disease affecting sleep, breathing, and speech. Yet the flow of language here is sometimes hard to follow. Thus it is with Beckett, while these reflections are not, forgive me, those of the conventional academic or philosophical essay. The title then is Words Everywhere. Seizures of Beckett. The stride of the grave and their difficult birth, down on the whole legal room, the grave digger puts on the forceps. We have time to grow old. The air is full of our cries. And even now, when we read by his winning a Nobel Prize, some of us still hear them although sometimes we're not sure whose cries they are. Some years ago that time, I was having a late lunch with my son, Dick, and his partner, Jane. Fair food, good conversation. And I had a vague sense of their staring at me and looking puzzled at each other as I kept on talking, but I know not why. Just talking and talking with no sense of what I was talking about, or for that matter, who I was, or what turned out to be some lolorina incoherence, or a regressively aging dehiscence, a word used by Beckett for coherence gone to pieces, but otherwise made familiar with the eatable fractures in the very stage of the form, with its drama of a speculative ego and a mirage of identity, still pointing the personal pronoun, I, not I, as we'll certainly see in Beckett, brought on by some primal discord, so discord, and subsequent paranoia that, quote, the real specific prematurity of birth, that's John Lacan. When they took me to the emergency room, battling into a murmur, infant languors in the end sheets, as in one of the texts for the things that fall me out of the dream, it was diagnosed as a transient ischemic attack or momentary stroke. It says I was not unable to talk, speech not blurred or repeated, but rather accelerated, as from the mouth of not I, but the brain still, still, in a way, it was more like a kind of psychogenic amnesia, what they called a fugue state, or dissociative identity disorder. If there was anything polyphonic in what I was saying, or somehow contrapuntal, from the word go, the word be gone, I had no idea. But by the way, I heard from my son Dick and from Jane, relieved when I came to myself, not I myself, whatever that may be, thought of nothing, forgot nothing, but all right now, eh? Hey? I was indeed saying things over and over to some indeterminate other, or by the way of anxious others who could hardly decide on anything in the disjointed repetitions. We have time to grow old. But as you get older, and the memory fails you, Forgetting a name or a face, or as with me now, more frequently in the class, you suddenly lose the lines of a poem well known by heart. It's hard not to think of Alzheimer's disease, from the complications of which my brother died not too long ago. 
the last time I saw him, not knowing who I was. The few say that way, but it was apparently nothing like that. For all that are peace within it, they say it happens only once. But if I somehow came to myself, it must be painful to be no one oneself, even more painful if possible, as Beckett wrote in First Love, than when one is. For when one is, one knows what to do to be less so. Whereas when one is not one, is any old one irredeemably. Still depend upon age to keep you guessing at the edge of consciousness, or for that matter, deep down, in the identity disorder of the unconsciousness of sleep. But deep in what sleep, deep in what sleep already, as Ham says in Endgame, where even dream isn't, at least for me, what it used to be. And here Ham lies with Hamlet when he says, oh God, I could be found in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space were it not that I have, were it not that I have bad dreams. I was in my place. In which our little lights are rounded with a sleep, it's far from infinite space. Or even as he waits to be whistled, staring at the wall, the nice dimensions, nice proportions of closed, sequestered kitchen, 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet. Indeed, in a nutshell, or as from the book of Revelations, the length and breadth and height of it, clothes, occluded cube, or the root of it in the psyche, my dreamings, claustrophobic. For in rather distressing, anamorphic, eye-opening ways, I'm crawling through a tunnel, a shaft, a drain pipe, or in a cramped an elevator, or with a pound piling hard in a windowless room, or smothered under a blanket, legs drawn under, as if curled up still in the womb, that God forsaken hole, or some old grave I can't tear myself away from. Then suddenly I'm awake in panic, wanting to speak, but unable, or ready to war and cry, as if I'd just been born, and not birthed the death of me, as now and again in Beckett, terribly short of breath which turns out to be the title of his shortest play, Breath, about 37 seconds on stage. Inspiration, respiration, with those, quote, instants of recorded vaginas, unquote, a wail or cry of distress, birth, right, death, right, out of this world or in, with the stage directions assisting, quote, that the two cries be identical, switching on and off and strictly synchronized light and breath, all time exactly, all time, all time, no time through the final silence, no light, no cry, no breath, in eternity that time, no more than five seconds. Over the asphyxiating sensation, however, I had no such control, nor did that actually, in the panic of similar seizures, for him lifelong. And as he is distracted, <clears throat> once in a conversation in Paris, suddenly stuttering when he was writing Commence, even more severe. They call it sleep apnea, a blockage of air in the windpipe, which at its worst seems to be caused by the nervous systems not getting an expected signal from the brain, which otherwise never stops. What leaves you breathless in Beckett. It's as if he transposed the nocturnal attacks the fear of blood rising until it was about to burst, or the terror of expectation of waiting for the imminent suffocation, heart racing, audible thumping, to the deep braining volatility of his most compulsive text. Or to see it another way, it's as if the specific prematurity of birth could only become a subject, as through the mirror stage, by finding itself in words, but in the insurgency there, in the imaginary, not the symbolic, but heading toward the real, spastic, aphasic, the Russian words of sudden flashes, the elliptical vain reasonings with the whole brain begging, something begging in the brain, begging the mouth to stop, but no stopping, the buzzing, the brain, flickering away on its own like mine in the ischemic attack. Now this, this, quicker and quicker, the words, the brain, as if praying less, flickering away like mad, and even when that wasn't happening, this other awful thought, some whisper in your head. Isn't that what you said? The whisper, the odd word that might be happening again with the words everywhere inside me, outside me. How impossible to stop. I'm in words, made of words, others' words. What others, as with Dick and Jane,